At the 2014 NFC Rookie Symposium, guest speaker Chris Carter of ESPN talked to players about having a fall guy in your crew. The video was brought to light after a recent ESPN The Magazine interview with former 49er Chris Borland. An ESPN spokesperson said, we completely disagree with Chris's remarks and we have made that extremely clear to him. Those views were entirely his own and do not reflect our company's point of view in any way. The NFL, which removed the video from its website Sunday, said in a statement, the comment was not representative of the message of the symposium or any other league program. The league's player engagement staff immediately expressed concern about the comments to Chris. The comment was not repeated in the 2014 AFC session or this year's symposium. Chris tweeting this apology last night. Seeing that video has made me realize how wrong I was. I was brought there to educate young people and instead I gave them very bad advice. Every person should take responsibility for his own actions. I'm sorry and I truly regret what I said that day. Stephen A, what's your reaction to CeCe's comments? Well, my first reaction was incredible disappointment because upon seeing it for the first time yesterday, meaning seeing the story, hearing what had happened, without even seeing the video, just reading it alone, I picked up the phone and called Chris, and the first words out of my mouth is, what the hell were you thinking? I couldn't believe that he had uttered those words at the symposium um, and that he made the mistake that he made. Uh, he was in he was incredibly contrite and acknowledged that you know what it was a poor choice of words It was something that should have never come out of his mouth uh, He was making a point and he was joking around when he said that part of it But he understands upon seeing the video how it looked um, and then he was just incredibly contrite and on that level You know as a guy that's known him for years and you know taking him at his word being a friend of his I understand and and you know I forgive him. I mean not that this is for me to forgive because who the hell am I? Uh, but I will say to you that he did appear incredibly contrite. It was incredibly unwise for him to say. You don't sit there and give the impression that it's okay for anybody to have a fall guy in any capacity. That's simply something that you can't say. It's not something that should ever come out of his mouth. It's real as some people in the hood and beyond may, 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 want, may want to acknowledge that that statement is. The fact is, is that any responsible adult has to know better than that. Um, and, Chris, and Chris Carter made a mistake. There is no denying that. There is no defending it. It is what it is. He was wrong. He apologized. And ESPN was absolutely right to take the position that it has taken because consistent with Walt Disney, the fact is it is not something that we condone nor tolerate in any way. As a company, the company is incredibly consistent when it comes to that. Whether we like it or not, that's the bottom line. The NFL, however, Skip Bayless is an entirely different matter altogether. Now, I am a person that is a fan of the NFL, not just the players, not just the game, but the league and the league office. Do I always agree with their decisions? Absolutely not. Do I tend to disagree from time to time? Absolutely. But I'm somebody that has come to the defense of Roger Goodell on numerous occasions. I think that a lot of things that folks uh, ultimately try to attach to him in terms of responsibility, I have been on the record on numerous occasions saying that Roger Goodell has gotten a bad rap, that a lot of times culpability and responsibility needs to be placed on the actual perpetrators as opposed to people finding a reason to blame Roger Goodell. In this particular situation, however, I must step back and look at our commissioner and look at the league office and say, really guys, was that statement that you made really necessary in terms of how quickly you put it out there? Chris Carter is somebody that you have had speaking to rookies at the symposium for 20 years, for the last 10 years, he is the guy that has given the closing remarks to these players because of his past history with substance abuse, because of the trials and tribulations he endured, because of the issues that he's willing to bring to the forefront, really putting his soul out there for those to just simply spectate and, and, and view and what have you, just throwing himself out on front street. Chris Carter's history has been about trying to help young people, trying to make sure that they understand right from wrong, that they understand that there are things that you can't do, that they are understanding that there are things that you have to guard yourself against. The NFL 
validates this for the past 20 years by literally asking him and compensating him to come and speak on their behalf. This is what Chris Carter told me yesterday in terms of their comp because I asked him, was he compensated? He said, yeah, they've been compensating me for years. And he left it at that. My point to you, Skip, is that you have reached out to him in the most hard cases, whether it's the Pac-Man Jones, it is Randy Moss in the past, whether it's Ray Rice, Greg Hardy, and you know, Alden Smith, the list goes on and on. You've reached out to Chris Carter to be a guiding voice on these things. And the second this goes down, before he has a chance to pass gas, you're trying to disassociate yourself from this? After it's been up on your website for Lord knows how long, you removed it yesterday, so what? That was yesterday. But it was up on your website long before that, okay? When you knew what he had said. When you knew, because you were there and you filmed it and it was your event. That's the kind of stuff that rubs me the wrong way. I totally understand that he was wrong. I totally understand that it was a mistake that he made. There is no question about it. Now, some people say it's not a mistake. It's something more than that. All right, fine. But at the end of the day, when you consider this man's work in the community and how he has reached out to help young people, troubled young people, time and time and time again, spanning two decades, to the point where the NFL has reached out to, for, to him in that span and compensated him in some way, shape, form, or fashion to do just that, to so quickly just disassociate themselves from him is incredibly unfortunate. Mm. All I'm saying is you can say the man is wrong. You can say that we don't condone that. You can do that, especially if you're ESPN, because it is consistent with who Walt Disney is and what they stand for mm. and what they've represented. One would argue you can't say that about the National Football League. One would argue that Chris, Chris Carter has been damn near a paragon of virtue for the National Football League something that they have validated by reaching to him for assistance. And the second he slips, you wash mm -hmm. your hands. Yep. I find that to be incredibly unfortunate. I really do. The problem with everything you're saying is it wasn't the second he slipped that the NFL did this to him. Oh, yeah. They posted this video more than a year ago, and it rode on their website for more than a year. And I want to say, I don't know Chris the way you know Chris, but, but I know Chris. And I like the heck out of Chris. And that's why this is hard for both of us here. Obviously, he, he stepped completely over the line after he started out with incredibly powerfully positive remarks, if you watch the video. Then yep. we know Chris, I guess he tried, I'm guessing here, tried to get a little too real, and he completely undercut the right side of his message with the wrong side of the message. But here's my mm -hmm. issue. How in the name of Roger Goodell did the NFL post the video immediately after that symposium? To your point, you don't think an NFL rep was there? I, I'm sure several reps heard his speech to the, to the rookies, right? Yes, they did. Okay. Yes, they did. And somebody had to sign off on posting this on the NFL's website. In no way am I trying to deflect blame off Chris Carter here. We both, Absolutely. Okay, we, we, we're, we're together on that. Wrong, yes, wrong, we are. wrong. But also wrong was the National Football League showing once again astonishing insensitivity. They're, this league once again on this issue is so completely out of touch that they, they posted this video and said, here, really? You did? So, so now, I was supposed to believe all through the Ray Rice ordeal that the National Football League was not able to acquire the elevator video shot at the hotel of Ray Rice, and we all know what happened. And that the NFL claims it saw the video when we all saw the video, when it was released publicly. What? I'm not buying it. I'm still not buying it. But you couldn't acquire that video but you could post this one on your website, not just on YouTube, on your website, and let it ride for more than a year until yesterday, when thanks to a Chris Borland interview in which he mentioned something about, in the context of he did not like that remark from Chris Carter, that kind of advice, and he's obviously retiring from football after a year, 
then somebody had the foresight to say, gee, maybe we should go back and check. Oh, oh, he said that? And, and it's brought to the NFL's attention. Oh, we're out. We're out. Oh, we distance ourselves from those remarks. Well, you didn't distance well, yourself from those remarks a year and something ago because they were in June of 2014. Really? It was June. Of, it was June of 2014, and they're quick to say that he didn't utter those remarks in, in, in you know, the, the following year, whatever. My, my point is, is that that means you brought him back again, didn't you? Which means you didn't really have much of a problem with them. So let's take a moment to pause and ask and ask the, the, the rhetorical question of why you didn't have a problem with them, because you understand that overall, his message, not on that particular day pertaining to that particular issue, but for the most part, his messages over years, over decades, has resonated, not just because of his life story, but because of his presentation, his delivery, and his relatability to the individuals you may have coming into the league. Now, if we're going to be real, and this is one of the reasons why I was even hesitant to broach this subject, because, Skip, I got to tell you something. One of the things that I'm getting tired about in this profession is that there's a level of rawness and realness that we can't seem to bring. And if you can't bring it, then you, you, a lot of people better ask themselves this question. What the hell's the sense in talking if you can't be real? Here's the real with this Chris Carter situation. That particular comment was wrong and irresponsible. There is no way that should have come out of his mouth. But it is a scintilla compared to the overlying message that he has religiously yep. delivered and presented over decades to one class after another, to one NFL player after another, to one culture consistently after another. This guy is in a position, and the reason why they asked him to do it is because his experiences and his presentation and delivery gives him a relatability to the incoming individuals that others may not have. And yes, Chris Carter's message didn't necessarily relate to Chris Borland and his experiences. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to repeat this, unfortunately, it related to some other dudes I got it. coming into the league. And that's what Chris Carter was trying to do. I can't defend him choosing to say that, and he knows that. He knows it's indefensible. Yeah. Damn well can't do something like that. No question. But for the NFL to sit there and to wash its hands like that, yep. essentially throwing him under the bus, I, I just, I find that incredibly, incredibly disappointing. I really, really do. Like They're not Walt Disney. Yep. The NFL is not Walt Disney. Hopefully the NFL can turn this into a positive and spin it forward. Maybe everybody can find a designated driver in their crew moving forward. That could be the message. Coming up, Terrell Suggs, welcome back. Sam Bradford to football with a nice hit. Was it dirty, though? We'll get into that coming up. Plus, it's always a good week uh, when you start with friend of the show, Little Wayne, in the building. Check out all of today's topics by going to Instagram right now and check out our rundown. And he'll be with us coming up.